In this special tutorial produced as a user request, we will make a difficult car part easily. You will learn how to work accurately with canvas images, understand how to work with splines simply, extrude using methods that many have never used before, use the sweep tool to create incredibly complex surfaces with ease, and use parameters to fully control your design. Welcome to the Learn It channel. Let's make a complex part for a car bumper. So the first thing that we're going to do is take the images that the user had sent me and upload them into our data panel. So if we go up to our data panel, here we have uh, the folder location that we'd like to input our images and also create our file. So here, uh, once we've gone to the correct location, I'm going to go to upload and we can drag and drop our images right in there. So he sent me a, a bunch of images. I'm just going to drag three that I'll use, the thickness, top, and width, and we can upload them. We'll give that a moment to upload. Now, as they are uploading, I just want to explain that this tutorial is going to have very little post-production edits to it. I want to uh, present this tutorial as best as I can from taking it one step at a time, making mistakes along the way. A bunch of our subscribers have commented how much they've benefited from seeing mistakes that I've made or problems that I've had to overcome. And so that's what this tutorial is going to be presented as. If you like this type of tutorial, please comment that in the, in the comment section below. Uh, let's get into it. So here we have a thickness, top, and width. Usually you should see a little preview of the image beside, but in this case, they're not all showing up, but that's okay. We, we know what the images are. So we can go to insert and we're going to insert a canvas. So right here with that data panel location defaulted over here on the left, it will bring up the images in our panel. And so if we've picked a random folder, who knows where, we are going to have to search for it. But this is the benefit of opening up our data panel to the location that we want all our files located in. So let's just pick our top image first. And I'm going to put that on our XY plane. And here we go. Let's just make it a little bit big. Very good. And at this point, I'm going to save my file as well. And you can see what I mean here. I'm just going to say, uh, what is this? Our car panel user requests. Okay, so as soon as we save that file, it's going to insert it into our data panel in the right location as well. So this is very uh, good of the user. Uh, he included a picture of our part with a tape measure beside, and this is awesome. So we're going to go to Canvas. We're going to go to that image that we've inserted, and we're going to calibrate it. Now, I should realize before we're going to calibrate it, I'm going to escape. We have to change our document settings to metric. So everyone who's been dying out there for metric tutorials, please comment below. Please like this video. That would really help. And maybe we'll produce more in metric. Uh, who knows? Okay, so let's go calibrate. Where is our calibration? Uh, is it showing up? Nope, it's not showing up. Okay, so it's right there. We're going to calibrate. I'm going to pick this point on our tape measure and I'm going to go down to, it doesn't really matter. We can go to 24 and this is 240 mils. Let's press enter. So automatically the size of our part and the tape measure are to scale. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to position my origin right now. If we turn on the origin, it's right in the middle. I'd like to position the origin on the bottom corner of the part. So the way that we can do that is go edit canvas and we're just going to drag this. There we go. And the reason is, is, uh, well, I'd like this to be a reference point that I can base the rest of my part on. So I'm going to bring again, the part is kind of in line yeah, right there, right there with the origin. So there we go. Now what I can do is trace this part. So we're going to create a sketch. And just to make sure that I'm picking the right plane here, the XY plane, go on an ISO perspective and let's create our line here. So starting at the origin, I'm going to move over to the approximate location of where our spline is going to be. I'm not going to hide the data panel now and let's go to spline fit point spline. Now we've got this complex shape right here, and this is so easy to do if we know how to do it. So I'm just going to pick one, two, and then the end point right around there. One, two, three, hit the check mark. And now we've got 
these handles and we've got everything that we can manipulate this spline to fit our shape. So first and foremost, we need to recognize that this control handle right here needs to be in line with the side of our part. And uh, the reason is, is we'd like the spline to be tangent to that line. So we've got a couple of options right here. I'm going to show you two of them. I'm going to pick a line. I'm going to hit that end point right there, and I'm going to bring it all the way down to approximately right there. And you can see that our part is not perfectly uh, you know, lined up, but that's okay. This is the whole point. If you have some verniers or calipers, which the other pictures do, you can measure all of this and then you know we can specify by pressing D and select, you know, calling up a dimension here, whatever we want to do. But this is just showing you that we've got our line right here. You see the symbol that it is vertical. Uh, if you look over here to our vertical horizontal constraint, this is just saying that this line is completely vertical. If we had a Cartesian plane, it would be 90, de degree, 90 degrees to our uh, x-axis here. Let's say we didn't have that. Let's say we went on a slight angle. Well, we can always click that horizontal vertical and pick our line, and it makes it completely vertical up and down. Now, we need to make this control rod in line with our line here. So there's two ways of doing it. Again, we can just pick that uh, control rod right there and we can go vertical and it will make it vertical. Uh, just keep in, keep in mind, if we have an imaginary 45 degree here, if the control rod or control handle is closer to being horizontal, if we pick that constraint and select it, uh, it's going to make it horizontal. So just make sure there's an invisible 45 degree uh, line right there. And we just have to make sure that it is going up and down. And then we can you know, select that control rod again and go vertical. One other thing we can do is go to our collinear constraint. And that's just saying two lines are going to be collinear with each other. So we can pick that control rod and our line. And that does the exact same thing. The symbol is different, but in this instance, it's the exact same thing. Okay, so at this point, we can take that control rod and we can manipulate our shape. So we can just bring that, you know, up and down. And it looks like this is pretty well in line with our other, with our, with our part right there. So this is perfect. Very good. Now I'm just going to, let's shape this a little bit more. And again, I'm not going to worry about making this perfect. I'm just going to bring this down to something like this. And then we're going to put these tabs in later. But let's just worry about this right now. OK, very good. So finish our sketch. At this point, we can hide our canvas. And we've got this closed profile. Another name for closed profile is a watertight profile. That's because if we picture filling this up with water, water can't leak out. If we had a, a gap in our part, then it wouldn't show up blue. If it's not turning up, you know, well, depends on your environment as well. Right now we have photo booth selected for our environment, but it's a different color to, based on what, what environment you're in. Here it's white. This closed profile is white. But regardless, let's go back to photo booth. Turns up blue. We know it's closed, and that means we can extrude it. So let's, um, actually, we don't know how high to extrude it. So uh, this is where we're going to insert the next canvas. So let's go there. And we're going to select our width. Let's pick our face right there. And now you can see if we zoom in, uh, our picture is actually reversed. So we're going to have to pick this mirror image right there. And we're going to have to put this into place. Now, this is a little bit hard for some. You can see that the picture is slightly on an angle as well. But we need to make this the same size as our part. So what we're going to do is grab this handle right here. And we're going to line up. You can see the corner or the edge of the part here is going to line up with our origin. Another reason why we're using the origin to be a part of our you know, that location on our part. We need to make this a little bit bigger. And we use this handle right here. It uh, ends up scaling everything in the same direction. So if we were to pull this handle, it's just going to scale it in X. And this is going to scale it in Y. We can reset it right here. We can just go one and one. 
but we want to scale both of them just like this. Okay, so let's put this somewhere in the middle. This takes a little bit of finessing and our part is on a slight angle as well. So let's make it just a little bit bigger there. Okay, and it's still just a, a teensy little bit too big right there. All right, so the edge of the part is lined up. The edge of the part is lined up, but it's on a slight angle. So we're just gonna have to adjust this. This goes in five degree increments. And I think it's about one, let's go one, one and a half. Maybe it's around two degrees. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So you can see the corner of our part and the corner of the part, they kind of match up with our sketch and we can go, okay. Now this is pretty neat. You can see his reading is 105 mils. Let's just do a measurement. And uh, as a little secret, you can grab a point here, hold down command or control and click on that other point right there. Oh no, this is, you can see the two points that it's uh, trying to measure are from there to there. So let's grab, let's grab this to here and you can see it's about that's about the same distance. So 103, we could also just, you know, on our sketch, we could draw a line and see how long it is, but it's, it's close to what our measurement is. So that's fine. We could make it perfect if we want, but you don't want to see me, you know, I'm <laughs> spending so much time making just things perfectly. You can do that. Um, great. When you're, when you're practicing this, and by the way, these pictures are going to be on our official website, for your reference if you want to follow along with this tutorial. You can see that in the in the link. There's a link in the description below. So here we go. Now let's just see how thick our part is. So there's a couple of ways of doing this and I'd like to show um, the first way so that we can get an idea of how we can make this part correct. So let's let's just create a sketch on our XZ plane. And our part is deformed. I, I'm kind of picturing that this, um, you know, this rib right here is supposed to look something like this. And this one's crumpled over here as well. I think the two outer ones are supposed to have this shape. So I'm just gonna assume that they're going to look somewhat the same. But here, let's create a, oh, and you can see, uh, here's another thing too. My mouse is snapping to the grid point. So if I don't want it snapping, I can just hold command or control on a Windows computer and it won't snap to those individual points but there we go let's just make an arc from there to there perfect and we'll make another one and here again it's snapping oh press escape sometimes you know that it's snapping uh, to the grid and we don't want that and here you can see as well uh, this is the problem with with trying to trace an object is we're not using dimensions and sometimes it can go crazy on us. So at this point, I wanted to share one thing. I highly recommend never using this unless you're in this particular instance. So I would like to lock this arc in location and I'm gonna right click and pick fix unfix. You can also do that by going to your constraints at the top fix unfix and it turns green so again i highly recommend not doing this there's so many reasons why but uh, I ex i'll explain those in other tutorials no problem in this case we're just going to lock it in and that way we can trace uh, with a little bit more confidence that our you know our sketch elements are not going to be dancing all over the place very good i'd like to make this these two elements tangent to each other so i'm going to pick the two of them and now I can move that into place. I can bring this arc a little bit further down. Very good. And we're going to bring this down over here. Great. Now let's just keep on going along here. I'm going to pick the rest of all of these points. Again, I'm going to go to our, uh, not our tangent, our fix unfix. I'm just going to fix these so that again, they're not dancing on me. Let's do another one over here. And this automatically became tangent. Sometimes that happens. Let me show you why. Our three-point arc. You can see that it's it's nowhere near to tangent. As I go and bring the arc approximately where tangent might be, it brings up that little symbol. 
and we know that they are tangent to each other. So I'll move this into location, maybe a little bit further down there. Perfect. And let's just move all the way on over. I want to make sure that that's tangent there too. Let's lock those into place. So you can see here because of that uh, deformation, we don't want to try and follow it. I'm just going to uh, put that, that feature looking just like that. We're trying to picture what this, this part looked like before it was damaged and do our best to replicate it. Okay. And I'm going to bring it on over approximately in location in line with uh, this point over here. So remember, we've created a sketch on this plane, the XZ plane. And now I want to bring our our line over in line with this edge right here. So in order to do that, I can press P for project and it's going to take this and you can see as I hover over that line, look at over here, there's a little point that shows up. In fact, everything I hover over, it's going to take that line and zoop, it's going to project it over onto the plane. So I want to grab that point. I could grab the edge as well. doesn't really matter. And now we've got this point that we can work with. And in fact, to show you a little bit what I'm talking about now, we've got our, you know, our sketches that are, are uh, replicating the structure of our part, uh, but we've also got our uh, other other canvas limit or canvas dimensions that we're working with. But basically, I want to move this on over in reference to that right there. Great, and now you can see that this profile is not closed. It's almost closed, but it's not. What we have to do is bring our line over and we've got to, I'm just going to bring it to the origin. It's still not closed because this right here is not closed. And I think I went a little bit past. Yeah, look at that. I went a little bit past. So how do we make this point go exactly above or in line with this? We want to pick the horizontal vertical. I want to say that this point is completely vertical to our origin. If that little symbol comes up, we're good to go. So now I can grab a line and this line is going to be perpendicular to our X axis. Now it turns blue and look what we've got right here. So this is now a closed profile. It's looking great. Awesome. So what I can do is let's finish our sketch and I'd like to make this profile right here the height of this line. So let's go to extrude. I'm going to pick that profile. And here for the extent type, we're going to go to an object and we can pick that point right there. And now it doesn't really matter. We don't have a calculated value for how much to extrude, but we're just saying, yeah, go from where it is to that point. It's looking really, really good right now. Okay, let's go. Okay, everything disappears with our sketch. We just have to go back to the browser, turn on our sketch. And now this is where the fun begins. So what we can do is Let's extrude. That's going to extrude everything. That's okay. Let's just let's just work with it. We're going to go to distance and we're going to pull this along here. It wants to cut everything out. Okay, so we're going to go instead of cut, we're going to go join. Okay, good. Now you can see, and just to let you know, I'm giving you advanced warning that this is the wrong way of doing it, but I'm just showing you a couple things that we can keep in mind in order to make our part look look really good and make it look as as is intended at the end. So here I don't want this. It's a little bit off. I'm just going to delete that. You can see Fusion is very smart. It heals everything. Now we want to maintain that uh, cutout profile that we had before. So I'm going to turn back sketch one on. We're going to uh, let's go to extrude. We can hide the body for now. We're going to take this profile, make our body visible again. And look at this. We're going to pull this through. Now we don't want to cut it. This is where we're going to use intersect. 
and it saves all of the features within that intersect right there, which is super cool. Okay, so this is almost looking there. It's almost looking the way that we want it. Um, but let's go back over here. We're going to hide our sketch. We're gonna hide the origin. Let's get it out of our way there. Let's go back to create a sketch. And right now I'm gonna pick this face because I want it to inherit all this geometry. Now, let's offset. And let's don't let's not do a chain. If we do a chain, you can see that we've got some limitations right here. But I'm gonna take off chain and I just want to pick these profiles. Oh, they're gonna bring them on the inside right there. Yeah, that's looking good. We're gonna pick all these edges right there, and we wanna do a an offset on the inside, something like that. Let's pick something like that there. And here we can even go to extend and let's extend. Oh, can we do it? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So now we've got this, these inside profiles and we can simply go extrude, grab those and we can go all the way through our part. In fact, we can pick all for our distance and it's gonna cut through right there. So at this point and here, what we can even do, this is pretty cool. We can delete that surface and fusion heals the part. Um, yeah, this is looking so close, so close to being done. But if you were to see the final parts uh, or the final part in all its glory, you will quickly begin to realize that our ribs right here, they don't extend all the way through our part. They're actually, they've got a, a, uh, an, a an arc that they're following and they, don't open at the end of the part, but rather they close off. So that's what makes this part pretty difficult to make, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna finish the tabs later on. We're gonna finish the tabs over here too. And I just wanted to show you that this is kind of the basis for our part. We're gonna use these similar techniques, but we're, end up, we're going to make this part uh, exactly as intended. And you'll see the final design I probably already seen it in the thumbnail to this video as well, but uh, let's let's go back in time. So everything that we've done up to, well, let's see, I'm going to grab our timeline. We're going to go back in time. This is looking great. Let's see. Now this is where what, what we don't want to keep. So I'm going to delete everything after that extrude. I'm just going to hold down shift, pick all of those tools, and I'm going to press delete. Now let's go back to our sketch here. We're gonna double click our sketch. We're gonna go back in time. We wanna close these uh, individual uh, features off. So in order to do that, I am going to pick our arc and I'm going to extend. And do you know what? In fact, I think I can just go extend here. Yeah, yeah, I think we can do that. Extend twice, perfect. And we're gonna do that over here too. Extend, extend, and we're gonna extend. So now these are divided into three. Let's go finish sketch. Perfect, look at that. Now, like I said before, these profiles are going to follow an arc and they're going to close off at the end so that the end of our part over here is going to be solid. It's not gonna be opened up. Now, how do we do that? How do we take this profile and tell it to follow an arc? Well, this is where the genius of Fusion comes in. Fusion is amazing with this. Let's create a new sketch on our YZ plane. And we're going to create a, you know, we could just do an arc, but let me show you using a circle is very easy to do. I'm gonna zoom in first of all, and what I'd like to do is take the top of this profile and we wanna project it in. We want to, um, yeah, use the top of this profile and I'm going to pick that and you can see now we've got this line right here. Oop, sorry, pick that, let's go okay. Now this is the top of the profile. And in fact, if I go to left view, you can see that that is exactly in line with the top profile. We're just gonna worry about this profile to start. Now let's take a circle, full circle. We're going to pick our center point over there and we're going to connect it to our top there we go. Second thing, we want the center point to be exactly in line with that point as well, so that all of this is tangent. If it was off to the side, 
then you can see it would be following this arc and that's not what we want. We want it tangent with that point. So how do we make our center point completely directly in line, vertical with our point up here? Well, we use the vertical horizontal constraint yet again. I'm gonna pick that point and our center. Now, this is so cool because we can picture where our profile will follow. All we have to do is grab our center point and look at Now our arc is growing. You can see this is where it's going to follow. And, and to show you a little bit easier, I'm just gonna, just gonna do it. Let's just do this together. So I'm gonna go create and we're going to go to sweep. Okay, so select our profile right here and our path. We're gonna pick that right there. Now it wants to cut it out. We don't want it to cut, we wanna go join. And now we've got these handles and we say, okay, I wanna go from there. I wanna bring it down right there. And now we've got this complicated shape. Okay, this is looking really, really cool. Great, now what if we wanna go in and adjust where it ends? It's very tedious to go to our sketch and to try and adjust it and everything. Let's just go to our sketch. We can activate it there or make it visible. I'm just gonna click on the diameter and right now you can see it is uh, just over a thousand mils. So let's create a parameter for this. This is brilliant for parameters. So here, our first one, we're gonna call it arc one and we're gonna call this a thousand millimeters. We're gonna go back to our sketch now and I'm gonna specify a diameter and we're just gonna call this arc one for our parameter. Now, we can zoom in, we can hide that. We can hide our other profiles. We're gonna trim this off later, don't worry about that. But we're gonna to go to our parameters now and let's make this a little larger and see what happens. Now you see the arc, you know, its ending point is a little bit further. Let's go to 1200, there we go. So again, depending on our, uh, on our part, how far should this go where you can just use some, some verniers or calipers to decide that. Let's go 1300. The part, the end of it is kind of digging in over here, which I don't really like. So I'm just gonna pull this back a little bit, 1250. Yeah, there we go. That's gonna be a nice clean cut. We've got this complicated shape right now. It's looking so good. So let's go back in time. I'm gonna turn that sketch on. We're gonna do the same thing. Why don't we create our parameters right now? So I'm gonna call this arc two, and this is gonna be, wow, why don't we just start at 1200? And then arc three, I don't know where the, what's this supposed to be. So I'm just gonna go 1300. There we go. And here we're gonna create two more sketches. So we're gonna follow the exact same pattern here. I'm gonna go and I'm going to project this arc. There we go, onto our drawing. So now we're, we know where the top is. It's in line with that. I'm gonna create a circle. We don't have to worry too much about the center point because we know how to constrain that, I'm going to connect it. Now, just to let you know, I could also create my circle down here. And then I want to say, I want to uh, connect our circle to the top point. And all we do for that is we pick our circle, we can go coincident. And I say, I want it in line with that. Now we're going to say, I want the center point vertical to that. D for dimension, pick our circle. This is going to be arc two. Okay, let's go finish sketch. We're gonna go back to create. We're gonna go to sweep, pick this profile and select our path. Same thing, we're gonna go join. Let's just adjust our handles a little bit here. So you can see that our end point needs to be way over. So let's change our parameters. Let's go 1400. Let's keep on going, 1600. I don't know, 2000, there we go. Now, maybe even to 2100 right there. That's looking pretty good. And we can see where it ends. No, no, it's kind of cutting through that right there. So I'm gonna bring it back to 2000. That's a little bit far still, so 1900. Okay, very cool. Let's do the same thing with our third profile. And don't worry about how these are extending past. We're gonna fix that in a little bit. So create a sketch. Do it on this plane. We're gonna press P for project, pick our arc over here, and now brings our line over, projected. 
to our plane, the sketch plane that we just created. Same thing, we're gonna create a circle. I'm just gonna go random like that. Let's go in a different order. Let's make our center point vertical to this point. We'll constrain it coincident to there. And we're gonna call this arc three. Excellent. Back to create. We're gonna sweep it. There we have it. Pick our path. Join. Do something like that. And now we can go back to our parameters and adjust this. I don't know, we can go all the way up to 2000 right now. And I'm gonna be worried about this endpoint. That seems to be the deciding factor. So let's go 21. This is even further, 23. Yeah, let's just go to 2300. Okay, very, very cool. Now let's trim all of this. So I'm gonna hide our sketches and we can even rename these sketches if we want. I could call this arc one, you know, arc two and arc three. Great, just so we know if we need to go in and fix something, or, you know, it's very easy to see, oh, okay, I wanna fix arc three for some reason and we can go fix it there, but. Okay, let's split our body. Now we should only have one body right now. If I expand bodies in our browser, we only have one body. We're gonna go split body. So I can pick that body, splitting tools. Because we created it on our origin, I can just pick our XZ plane, boom. Now we've got body one and body two. I'm going to take body one and I'm gonna go remove. If I go delete, ah, we've got associated features will fail. So if I go delete, ah, now we've got problems. So we're gonna undo, undo, delete. We're going to go back to body one and we're going to go remove and that just gets rid of them there. So now we're going to do the same thing. Pick our body. Splitting tools is going to be our bottom face there. And that's actually in line with eh, instead of, yeah, let's just pick the bottom face. That's fine. Now we've got two bodies again. I want to remove this body. Now look at this. This is looking great. So all we need to do is hollow this out right there. So let's go back, create a sketch on our face and it inherits all that geometry. We can work with all this geometry. So now let's go offset. We're gonna pick all of these profiles. We're gonna do the same thing. And in fact, if we go back to sketch two, did I already do that? No, I didn't. Okay, so let's just do this one more time. Perfect, I'm gonna move this on over to approximately, and we can even turn on our on our sketch right there, and that looks, that's kind of in line. Perfect, Let's, why don't we just make this a nice, nice number over here, minus 2.5. Okay, and now we can extend it. Let's extend that, let's extend that. We kind of have to break these apart again. There we go finish our sketch. Now we have we can actually use these three arcs that we've used before. So let's turn on arc one. We're going to go back to a sweep. We're going to pick this feature now, or this profile, I should say, our path, and we want it to cut it out. So look at that. This is looking so cool. Let's do the same thing with the other profile. So activate sketch or arc two, go back to sweep. Pick this and pick our path. So you might notice that our path doesn't need to connect to our profile that we want extruded. We don't need to do that. Um, it can be off to the side, but it will follow that uh, in 3D space. Let's go back to sweep, pick this guy, turn on arc three, pick our path, boom. Look at this. So we've got this extremely complicated <laughs> feature, this body which is looking super cool. I think this is, Fusion is just amazing with this sort of thing. So now we've got these uh, ribs, these fins going out. Now all we have to do is add some tabs and that's what's happening over here. So actually I wanna go back to sketch one. I'm gonna go back in time and turn on our top canvas. What I think I'm gonna do is, let's just do this cutout over here. Yeah, something like that. Now I could, I could do that. Why don't we just do it? Yeah, let's just, let's just make it right here. 
going to go on an angle. There we go. I want this to be horizontal. Perfect. And let's do the same thing over here. Okay, and then our other tab over here is looking good. Let's go finish sketch. And now I want to kind of go back in time and I don't want it to extrude the whole profile. So I'm going to find that uh, extrude, that first extrude. I can go right click edit or double click and just get rid of that one profile. Very good. So now let's add the tabs to it. So we're going to go create a sketch and we're going to pick this one right here. Now, this is where we'll bring up our width and we want to kind of make this, this tab uh, profile. Now we could use our verniers, we can measure it all, we can do it all right. Um, let's just press P to kind of zoom out there. Let's just turn off our canvas. I'm going to press P because I want to project these profiles and this profile into our drawing. Actually, I don't even need to, to do that profile. I'm just going to pick this face right there and let's go. OK, there we go. Let's hide our body. I'm going to turn back on our width. And now I'd like to try and draw this profile right here. First and foremost, I don't want these lines to get in our way. So I'm going to double click. It selects the entire chain and press X. Now it turns it into a construction line, but it doesn't turn it into a closed profile. If it's solid lines, this will turn blue and it kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to double click, press X, turn it into construction lines. You can also do that over here in our sketch palette. But now let's just draw what we think this is going to look like. So I'm going to put the fillets in later. I'm going to go up here. Let's make this a little bit longer. There we go. Something like something like that. And then I'm going to seal that off. So now it's a closed profile. I'm going to put the the fillets in later. I could even do it right now if I wanted. Um, yeah, why don't we just do it now? So I'm going to go to fill it and here we can pick the, the point and it will make it, you know, into this nice fillet right there. Perfect. Pick that point again and just adjust it. There we go. Let's do this one. Oh, so that's right. We only have to pick one at a time and then repick our fillet or otherwise it will keep the same dimensions for all of them. So for those two, I'll keep it the same. There we go. Oh, let's just keep on going here. Sorry, those two. Excellent. Enter. These two. Enter. And then our last one, these two. And we can just go enter right there. So now we've got this tab shape. Let's go finish sketch. And we're going to hide our canvas, turn on our body. Now this is where something really cool happens. We're going to go extrude. We're going to pick that profile. Actually, it picks it by default, the last closed profile that we've created. And we've got this tab now. Now, we can turn on our top canvas and you can see that our tab is located over here. So that's OK. Let's keep this sketch and we're going to pick two sides. And this is cool. We're going to go one way to the end. And then we're going to pull this handle and we're going to make it in lines. And all of a sudden we've got this tab over there, which is so cool. Let's go joint. Now bring up that same sketch that we just used. We're going to turn it on, make it visible. We're going to extrude it and we're going to do the same thing. Two sides. And look at this. I'm going to bring it all the way over. And we're going to bring this tab all the way over. And let's just make this in line. You know what? That's approximately right. And instead of cut, we're going to go join. And then look at this, all of a sudden we've got that tab over there. So it's using the same dimensions and everything. And now we've got our two tabs. We have two more tabs over here that we can create. Uh, why don't we just do that? Why not? So let's go to create a sketch over here. I'm going to press P for project and project in our body. And let's do the exact same thing. I'm just going to bring out uh, I don't know how far it is here. 
it's right around there so and if we don't know let's just let's just go way on over there we go and we can grab this edge and move it into place so we're not sure where that end location is oh, there we go now let's go finish and we can use the same method that we just used so i'm going to pull this on over two sides there we go let's go a little further and again you can use your calibers to make this the exact dimension that you want this is just showing you a new skill we're going to do another extrude over here two sides and there we have it right there if this second tab is a little bit too long we can just go press pull and we can oh not that one let's just go exit we can pick that face and just move it in oh it's gonna okay so this is where press pull it uh, it assumes some other geometry that you're working with so instead of using that we're just going to use extrude and extrude just extrudes that face a little bit so you can see our you know when we turn the canvas on one tab is longer than the other uh, but yeah that that's looking really 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 good so i think this is our finished part right there now we can put some uh, we can put some fillets on it if we want. Let's just see what kind of uh, limitations we have. I'm going to pick all these different surfaces right there. And let's just see if we can we. No, no, no. It's not letting us. So that's okay. Um, we could probably put some on the inside. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. One, two, three. Let's see if we can add some over here. Oh, we can. Perfect. Okay, so that's that. And yeah, again, I don't think we can do much with this over here. Oh, we can, beautiful. So let's do that. Let's pick more than one by holding down command. Sweet, look at that. Will it allow us to pick that? Oh, it does now. Oh, beautiful, okay. So, you know, it's, it's probably not the best. We've got some errors, but it's doing a pretty good job calculating everything here. So let's just put something small like one mil or something like that. Okay. Well, I don't know about you, but this is a very complicated part that we have quickly made into something incredible with, uh, with Fusion's help. This is great. So before we finish up, uh, let's say that you create this part, but you don't have yourself a 3D printer. Well, that's where we'd like to take you on over to PCB Way. PCB Way is an amazing source for any kind of 3D printing at all that you want. You can just simply go to the body over here. You can right click and we can go save as mesh. Let's output it as an STL binary file. We can go OK. Save this as our car panel part. Let's go save. And now we can take that part and go on over to PCB Way. Here we can just go right to 3D printing and we can drag and drop our files. So we just saved that STL file. I'm gonna drag and drop it right there, car panel. And now it will tell us a one part, 1245. You can go through all sorts of different materials, resin, nylon, all of these different things. You can even bring it up in tool steel if you want. Uh, there, They've also got types of resin, a very cool different colors, depending on what you pick. Let's go nylon, there we go, dark black, PLA. You've got tons of different colors right there. But you've got all sorts of different things that you can select and then you can submit requests and get your part in no time. So check out PCB Wait, they're amazing. So at this point, I just wanted to say, if you've learned anything, tell us in the comments below, what did you learn? What did you benefit from? What techniques are you gonna use next time? What projects are you gonna use this with? Comment anything, we would love to hear from you and I, I will do my best to respond to each of you. Uh, please also know we are so thankful to our Patreon members, our YouTube members, those that have purchased a coffee for us, those who have uh, uh, graciously contributed to our channel. Thank you so much, everyone. Please continue to stick with us. We've got a ton of different things along the way. If you haven't seen our Safety Razor tutorial series, uh, click on it right now. Uh, it's right on somewhere on your screen. Um, and check out our other videos too. Until then, keep on learning with the Learn It channel.